and welcome to our new 10-part LinkedIn series, Retail Marketing Cutting Through the Noise. I'm Rachel Murray, Business Development Manager and Lead Strategist for Fountain. We're a Google Global Award-winning digital marketing agency based in the UK and North America. Once we'd realised the extent that the current pandemic was going to impact retailers, we put together the very best minds at Fountain, Google and our external consultants and conducted over 100 hours of research. To those are sharing our findings with you, I'm going to be discussing our client learnings and our own experiences as a business. Hello, my name is Radek Stejskal. I'm Managing Director of Mobile App Development Studio called Anama. We are focused on, mainly on helping retailers to increase their profit by implementing innovative technologies. And our team receives several recognition for our work, including awards for Tesco or T-Mobile apps and companies based in London, Toronto and Prague. Hi, my name is Čepán Kopřiva. Uh, I am CTO of Blindspot Solutions. We do focus on providing applications, deploying AI for consumer behavior detection and for planning and scheduling of resources. We are the third fastest growing company in Central and Eastern Europe, recognized by Deloitte. Retail is one of our joint core specialisms and we've chosen to focus on this for our series to help retailers struggling with the current economic climate. The UK retail sector was already facing an uncertain economic future, and this has been heightened by COVID-19. There's a lot of information out there, and rather than relaying it, we're going to be making sense of it, hence passing through the noise. We're not medical professionals, and we're marketers and tech experts, as you know. So for this series, we're going to be focusing on addressing marketing and tech issues that retailers may be facing during this time, rather than passing comment on the pandemic itself. So... The first area we are going to be focusing on is cutting unnecessary spend, a hot topic for retailers at the moment. Stepan Rachel, multiple retailers are pulling back their marketing and tech development spent through concern that trading will be severely affected by the next 12 months. Is this a right decision? Well, Radek, from a tech perspective, I think retailers should differentiate on what kind of technology spendings uh, they are considering cutting on. There are definitely tech investments uh, which can be postponed. Uh, however, smart technology deployment can help to handle the current situation and also the situation which will be present when the lockdown is actually over. So uh, the existing technology allows retailers to continue running their businesses, uh, just uh, shifting them into online. That's what uh, we can see nowadays. However, in the future, technology can also help them with safety and security issues, which will be present when the lockdown is over and uh, people start attending the shops again. And uh, wisely deployed market prediction technology, for example, will make a significant uh, difference in turbulent times. So my advice is to use the current time to, uh, number one, draw a scene of the future shopping, Number two, identify the problems uh, which have to be addressed now and in the future. Uh, these problems don't have to be addressed by technology. Uh, that would be probably mainly physical security of shopping, but possibly also others. Uh, number three, use the existing time to get familiar with the existing technology and uh, create business cases for application of the technology. For example, uh, widely spread technology is automated measuring of the body temperature of co customers using thermal camera at each shop entrance. An alternative to that is having an individual with a thermometer at each shop entrance. And uh, you can probably imagine that both ways do have pros and cons, mainly speed of processing, uh, length of queues, but uh, also uh, cost. And uh, the last point would be investigate the cutting edge technology for retail, which will handle the possible new market situation and which will help the retailers to get ahead of other competitors once the shops open again. Uh, I think that uh, these technology pieces might cover demand prediction, dynamic pricing, but also uh, support the supply chain uh, management and planning. Thanks, Stefan. From a marketing perspective, advertising has a long-term as well as a short-term impact. It could be over a year before you see a return from your efforts. So I would advise, if you're able, not to cut back your advertising spend during the incoming recession, which we all know is probably coming. If you maintain or increase your spend and your competitors cause their activity, your share of voice and share of the market will increase as a result at a lower cost than during normal economic times. 
This being said, your CEO may very well ask, where can I cut back spend? And as we all know, marketing often takes the hit. So where do you make those cuts? My advice is to use the Pareto principle for digital marketing. Generally, the top 20% of your ads and keywords are generating 80% of your revenue. This 20% is what you want to keep on. This is obviously normally transactional and best-selling product keywords for retail. But whatever you do, don't switch off remarketing. People will still visit your website because they'll be in the browsing mindset and you'll want to capture their data and keep front of mind in a positive way when they're ready to buy. The smartest thing to do would be to increase advertising spend during a recession. I know that sort of sounds a little bit scary, but increasing budgets will deliver post-recession growth on the premise of increasing share of voice when competitors are cutting spend and therefore market share in the long term. There are no official studies that challenge this view, but plenty that support it. We've actually seen a couple of examples of spend slashing creating opportunities recently, such as when Amazon cut its paid search spend for Google to almost nothing. For Amazon, this was already, they're already struggling to meet exceptionally to high demand, so it was a logical move. It now means CPCs for any products previously bid on by Amazon have reduced. For retailers, over for retailers that are selling products to compete with Amazon, now is the time to invest more if you're able to. Another example is Facebook. CPCs and CPMs on Facebook have also plummeted by as much as 57% for some accounts, presenting some excellent opportunities for our clients. Rachel and Stepan, thank you for brilliant insights. And that wraps up episode one. So please join us again tomorrow when we will be discussing what retailers can learn from past economic downturns. Thanks for listening.